Welcome back. Well, earlier this year, I was interviewing Pauline Hanson, the One Nation leader, talking about climate change, at which point she directed us to talk to her climate change spokesperson, Malcolm Roberts. Well, he's here in the studio now, joining me for more. Thanks for your time today. Thank you, Tom. Just Good want to, to step here. through a few things in terms of your belief. So you maintain the Earth's not warming from more greenhouse gases from humans, that there's not a warming of the planet as a result of that. That's correct. And not only that, there's no warming. Mm. In Australia, the temperatures in 1880s and 1890s were not only warmer than today, the heat waves were longer and had hotter temperatures. All right, so I just want to step through the sort of logic of this. You do accept the fact that greenhouse gases trap more heat than nitrogen, oxygen and argon as well, the other elements of the atmosphere. You carbon dioxide um, absorbs, car uh, absorbs long wave radiation, yes, yes but it doesn't yes. warm the planet. Well, it, 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 so though, but it does by nature it, um, trap more heat than those other parts of our atmosphere. You agree with that scientific element? It doesn't trap heat. It does absorb more because heat. In a bottle, in a sealed laboratory bottle, it traps more heat, but in the open atmosphere, it, it, it absorbs heat and then liberates it. Well, if you don't get any heat at all, though, I mean, if we didn't have any carbon dioxide, according to scientific reports, it would be sort of minus 18 on the planet. So carbon dioxide has an element of making the Earth habitable in terms of heat. Carbon dioxide has a, um, an element of making the Earth habitable in terms of it's mm. essential for all life. That, that's for sure. But it doesn't cause warming of the earth. The you, don't, you don't think carbon dioxide warms the earth at all? Well, you see, there are a number of sources. Mm. First of all, well, there are some peer-reviewed scientific okay, papers well, that say it uh, cools the earth. Venus, for example, has a lot more carbon dioxide. It's about 400 degrees. That's an example of a lot more carbon dioxide. And as a result, it's a lot hotter. And Mars, for example, has 97% carbon dioxide and is cooler than earth. So you don't, you don't accept carbon dioxide at all? The earth... Is, is any contributor to warming... The, the, That's what I was about to say. There are some it. scientists who say that carbon dioxide warms the planet. There are some uh, scientists who say it cools the planet. The others, and the ModTran simulator is the, probably the best, it says that up to a certain level, I think about 100 parts per million, which is 0.01%, carbon dioxide is responsible for absorbing some heat and holding it. But above that, it's, not, it's no effect. It, so, when you say above that, I mean, you're saying, what, even if it's 100%, there's no difference to heat? I'm just going by what the ModTran simulator says. Mm. And that, that's had good results. So the other thing, Tom, is that the Earth has often been described by some people as a blanket. It's the complete opposite of a blanket. Mm. Because what happens is the sunlight hits the Earth's surface, warms the surface, whether that's the ocean or the parks or, or footpaths or roads, it doesn't matter what it is. Mm. The air touches that surface and then raises because it picks up the heat from the surface. How, how do you, for example, explain the fact that satellites have measured at the exact level where carbon dioxide is a heating up? of the Earth. How do, you, how do you explain that, for example? Well, there hasn't been... Uh, th there's variation. The CSIRO, for example... No, no, no. Well, there's no variations on that. That's what satellites... No, are there is variation. There's variation in everything in nature. I'm not that's, the same height so as that you, for example. That, that, doesn't, that doesn't make sense. I'm saying at the level where carbon dioxide is, that's where heating's occurring. There's no variation on that. That's what satellites have measured. The carbon dioxide levels are greatest near the Earth. It's heavier than air. It's one and a half times the weight of air. So carbon dioxide is not evenly distributed. It's distributed mm. quite unevenly around the planet. Yeah, that's, For example, that's, that's, there's that, more carbon dioxide above the Amazon quite often than above heavily industrialised yeah, China. Yeah, but in, in terms of that, that's where the satellites are measuring. That's where the, the hotter points You've are. You've been led astray point. there somewhere because satellite, no. we, we've checked the NASA sat, the satellites are, that are measuring carbon dioxide mm. and it's highly variable. It varies from as low as 300 parts per million, which is just 0.03%, to around 500 parts per million in other parts of the world. And it, fl it fluctuates on an hourly basis. I've seen the satellite data myself. You're, you're very focused in your Facebook posts on the relatively low amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So it's about 400 parts per million. And you're saying, how could this small amount make a difference? That's not actually scientific, is it, to just say, well, it's small, it doesn't make a difference? Couldn't you explain why it's not scientific? Well, okay, here's one. If you've got a billionth of a gram of radioactive polonium in a cup of tea, that's tiny. How could that kill someone? Well, here's another but one. It, hang on. But yep. it does. It, it, that's correct, because yes. you're looking at a radiation effect. Now, if you look at another effect like arsenic, there's a chemical effect involved. A tiny amount of arsenic can kill you. But when we're looking at a physical effect, a tiny amount of an, an atmospheric gas, a trace gas, cannot affect it. But what, you just say cannot. That's not based on science. No, yes, it is. Cannot. Yes, it is. 
It is because the empirical evidence states that the temperature well, is not increasing. And, and the that, other thing well, is... That's not true, though. That's it not is. true. It is. The empirical evidence doesn't suggest that it's not heating. The empirical evidence shows that it was warmer, for example, in the United States in the 1930s and 40s. 70% of mm -hmm. America's state records... Let, let's go no, through no, no, the Let me records. answer your question, no. please. The 70% of American states' record temperatures were in the 30s and 40s, have not changed. That's, it, that, that's not true either in, a, yeah. in an annual basis. That's not true. That's not true. The record temperatures for American states, That's a record, 70%. Yeah, but you can pluck out individual days and that the was hottest 30, temperature. That was in the 30s and 40s. But most of the uh, hottest years have come. A lot of the states have the hottest years, and I think it's something like 37 <coughs> states have had their hottest years the hottest since year the year in America, 2000. The hottest year in America for the whole state, the whole nation of America, mm. 1930s. The hottest, Hotter than today. 37 of the states have their hottest years since the year 2000. As I just said, there's so much variation in nature, Tom. Well, that nature. But this is well, this is one of your core elements. You don't you don't believe the Bureau of Meteorology when they're saying that the that Australia is heating up. You don't believe that. Correct, because the Bureau only re only shows mm. publicly in its graphs data from 1900 onwards, and that was c very cool in 1900 compared with the previous years and the f pre subsequent pre years. Pre 1910, a lot of the measurements were so rudimentary they included thermometers in beer crates on outback verandas. You don't seriously expect that to be no, your so-called no, empirical evidence. No, I don't. Well, that's many the point, of them, no, many of them were done in Stevenson screens, as they are now. But there's an, as I just said, when you're saying let's see all the records from before then, they were too rudimentary. They weren't reliable. No, they weren't, Tom. Some would have been that way, but some of them were set up by a very well-known, I think it was Rag, I can't remember the guy's name mm -hmm. for sure, Rag, who did a phenomenal study around the world of the best ways to measure temperature. And the Bureau of Meteorology's early precedent, pre predecessors had a very good record. Have you read the peer-reviewed Bureau paper on ACORN SAT2, the adjustment technique they apply? No, I haven't, no. But, I, but I am aware of people who've criticised that and found Hang, glaring you, mistakes. You're aware it. of people that have criticised it. You haven't read it. No. Why not? I can't read everything. This and is, quite this frankly, is your, I don't trust You the say the Bureau of Meteorology is falsifying information, but you won't read the methodology by which they change uh, data. We've, to we've make found it more significant accurate. errors in that, and we're, we're we, going to ask Bob, stay what? tuned you in have, Senate Estimates. Well, you haven't read the peer reviewed paper on their adjustment technique, though. But I've read other scientists' criti critiques of it. Have, Will you read the paper for yourself? I may do. Right. Let's but, take, but I have very little let, faith let, in Bond, let, by the way. Let me walk you through an example of what the Bureau does. Kerrang, this is recently, in January of 2000, the measuring location was moved from the location in the town centre, that was near the post office, mm -hmm. to a more open site in Parkland. Now, that resulted in a drop of overnight minimum temperatures, particularly in the cooler months. So what was done on those clear nights in particular, and they did this carefully, yep. and it's shown on their website, an adjustment was made between 0.2 and 1.2 degrees on those nights. Mm -hmm. Do you understand why they've done that? Yes. Is that Ch a fine changes. methodology? That's fine. Right. That's fine. What we need to then, then do is make sure that that amount was correct, and that's where the question comes that, in. And, that, and that's what they're doing, and you haven't read how they've adjusted it and by how much by, but you're I've saying read, I don't trust I've them. read scientists, exceptionally good scientists, mm. critiques of the bomb and found glaring you errors. You say exceptionally good. <laughs> they've had it peer-reviewed. They've had it internationally peer-reviewed. They've also had the data published raw. They've also allowed the UK Met Office and NASA, NASA to look at it as well. Tom, and we've... They've, they've we've, said it's warming We've well. cross-examined the CSIRO on this. They presented a paper to us that was peer-reviewed, like many other papers, the one paper on temperature from them by Marcotte, 2013, and Marcotte himself, the author, lead author, said you cannot trust, you cannot rely on the temperatures that he's, pre that he's presented okay. in his own paper let's, for the let's 20th just century. Stick, let's what I'm stick, saying, well, what on, I'm Tom, saying you, you you've raised a you, critical point. No, what, what's happening is that is the that peer review is no longer adequate. It's not done so properly. It's, it's buddy review. Well, based on what, though? That you pull out one <coughs> name and you say this is wrong, and you, you just said to me, good scientists. Yeah, Jennifer Marahasi, um, Bill Johnston, who worked mm. in the Bureau, completely Other adjustments us. that happen occur when large trees grow near a measurement station if lawn is irrigated or if it goes from manual to automated measurements. Are they no all problem. acceptable? No too? problem. So when you, when you have previously said the bomb's manipulating data or changing it, you accept it needs to be changed. That's the nature of how this science works. You I agree accept with that? that it needs to be changed in certain circumstances, yes. But mm. one thing the bomb doesn't do, for example, they change from the large Stevenson screen, <coughs> 
which was designed, which was recognised as the best for Australia's conditions, and they changed it to the small Stevenson screen. Now, they did not keep them going in parallel. They have no clue as to what, what the impact of that was. We know from, science, from Spanish papers, peer-reviewed Spanish papers, that when you change to a smaller Stevenson screen, it, it raises the temperatures mm. recorded. The this bomb has artificially inflated the temperatures. Well, you, you, and they, hang your on, Tom. Claim. No, no, I'm not going to hang on, because you're just saying bomb has artificially inflated them. You won't even read their peer-reviewed paper on what they're doing. You're just saying the technique is wrong because of something else you've read. Tom, do you think there is a single politician in this, in this parliament who's read everything that, that he comes across? There's not a single politician in this parliament that claims the Bureau of Meteorology is deliberately manipulating data. Either. Yes, there are. Yes, there are. Who else is Craig there? Kelly, George Christensen, and there are others who've got questions well, about have it. Have any of them read this? Uh, Craig Kelly's done an enormous amount of work on this. Has he read Craig the Kelly, Acorn I, Sat 2 paper? I don't know, you have to ask right, him. Right, but that's my point. That, uh, no politician that uh, is questioning <coughs> whether uh, the Bureau of Meteorology is accurate enough or, or in it for some reason uh, needs to necessarily go through every line. I just item. told you there are politicians questioning it. George Christensen and Craig Kelly, for example, were very disappointed when, when Tony Abbott didn't get his way. Tony yeah. Abbott also questioned it. Tony Abbott, the Prime Minister at the time, questioned he, he's it. He's questioned the Bureau of Meteorology. Has yes, he has. He, he tried to instigate an inquiry and Greg Hunt just had a, let them have a cup of tea and bickies and mm. that was their inquiry. So there are serious questions about the Bureau of Meteorology. They don't stack up. Now, some of their measurements, they have to homogenise. Tom, do you think it's reasonable to have a site 900 kilometres from another site and homogenise relative to that and that alone? The IPCC's temperature data for the 1850s relies on one point for the whole of the Southern Hemisphere. One point. That's what we're basing this stuff on? The IPCC on? does not rely on one point in the whole southern atmosphere. It did in the 1850s for the Global Historical Climate this is, Network. This is the point. This is why we're looking at recent data, because that's the reliable stuff that's the measured best, well. The, you talk about <laughs> one measurement from 1850. To okay, let's get to the most reliable about. measurements of all. Let me and ask you this. You record. claimed in 2016 there was a pause in warming on the planet. Since then, we've had four of the hottest five years in recorded history. Do you have any pause for thought? Since 1995, there's been no overall trend in, in That's temperatures. That's not true. That's it not is true. true. That's it not is true. true. The, the last the four years have been, have been warmer than the average. Since Tom, 20, are you aware of how averages work? Since 20, it's not averages. These are not averages. These are the four of the high. <laughs> These are the four of the five hottest years on record. No, no. That, that's, that is what's happened since 2016. They're not, they're not as warm as, for example, the 1930s, and they're not as warm as the 1880s that, and 1890s. Well, well they are, Senator. They they're are not. warmer than the 1930s. The years are warmer. And this is according to the data. See, this is what happens. Greenpeace fabricates a, a claim about the, about the Australian Open being warmer than ever. The 1939 I'm not, temperature I'm not in interested Melbourne in delving down into one year from Greenpeace because that's not the question I'm asking you. And, and this is the issue with these sorts of debates. You can always pluck out a year when it was hotter. Exactly. A, a day when it was and hotter that's in what 1939. You're doing. No, I'm, what I'm saying is I'm not plucking out. What I'm saying is since 2016, you said there was a <coughs> pause. We weren't heating up anymore. We've had four of the five hottest years in recorded history since then. Tom, natural variation... Yeah, it's that... Well, that, as you saw, you're still putting it down to natural variation. Entirely. There's no, there's no set cause for this attributable to human production of carbon well, dioxide. Well, the, well, well, there is, and that they... Well, where's your evidence? Can you, can you cite to me yes, a single the paper... Time. No, single paper, a single paper, or any scientific agency or any scientist who can prove to scientific us there are two agency, things well, yes. improved. There, OK, give Bureau it to of me. Meteorology, the NASA... No, they have never proven uh, carbon well, dioxide proven, from human not according activity. To you. Not, not, not carbon, according to you. NASA and the, and the Bureau of Meteorology has never, ever, ever proven that carbon dioxide from human activity affects temperature. That's never. according to you. <clears throat> Show me the paper. That's I invite you. you. I invite any one of your listeners the, the, to show me the paper. Out, they are out there, and, and you've no, been sent them before as well by no, scientists, we by CSIRO, multiple, multiple people. CSIRO, let me, let me get on to that. I've cross-examined no. the CSIRO, Let me ask Tom. you this, because as I've said, four of the five of the last years are the hottest in recorded history. Since you made the statement, we're in a pause. What would it take for you to re-look at this? What if we have another <coughs> nine out of the next ten years that are hot, the hottest in recorded That's history. hypothetical. Would, See, would you, well, I'm just asking, at what point would you start to say, gee, this does seem like a trend? I always go on the real data. Now, the CSIRO that I have cross-examined, mm. I'm the only uh, MP in this, in this parliament of cross-examined, mm. has admitted to me 
sitting this far apart from the acting head of climate at the time, Steve Rintoul, the temperatures today are not unprecedented. I'll say that again. Temperatures today well, let, let are not unprecedented. Why do you talk over me when I come up with a fact like that, Tom? Well, the CSIRO... Because, because what you often do, and reading a lot of your stuff, is you take one part of a, a sentence out of context, and that's happened before, for example. Unambiguous, uh, unambiguous. On, CSIRO has said to me that temperatures today are not unprecedented. Will you read the peer-reviewed bureau paper? on ACORN SAT2 and their measurements and see for yourself whether you might be convinced that they have the right procedures. Will you read my cross-examine of CSIRO? I will happily read the Bureau of Meteorology sure. paper. If you send, the, send me the, uh, the title and sure. the author's name, I'll happily read it. All right. Malcolm Roberts, thanks for your time. Thank you, Tom. Well, the South Australian Crossbencher has called for a parliamentary inquiry into the